I've done so much research on, on you, Penny, and energy and consciousness and what the robes have had to say over the last few decades. And I love the work that you've produced from the knowledge that the robes have given you. And can we just spend just a few minutes now talking about the massive changes that are coming and that you've been already warned about and that we should be made aware of. And if you can share what those changes are and then perhaps give some advice, maybe some tips, I know the people listening would love, love, love to hear this. So thank you so much, Penny. Well, well, I don't really want to say what I know fully because it would scare the bejabbers out of people. But um, let me say this. I think we need to rebuild the infrastructure that we have in a, in a pretty complete way. So um, that, that rebuilding, we're, we're so vulnerable in terms of our grid, the electrical grid. We're so vulnerable in terms of what the uh, climate is doing and the fact that the climate is changing and when you plant a crop and you spend money to plant that crop and then Mother Nature comes along and wipes it out, you are in debt, number one, and people are out of food, number two. So I think that that's a major thing. And then, you know, there's all kinds of stuff happening with the North and South Pole, with humans who are foolishly still continuing to war with one another. And so in the, in the overall scheme of things, what I have tried to encourage people to do is learn to grow food in any kind of weather. And that includes being able to set up a little tiny greenhouse to protect your tomato plant if you need to, or your potatoes, or, you know, whatever. That includes um, not only being able to grow food in almost any kind of weather, but how do you preserve it? You know, what do you need to know to dry it? What do you need to know to can it? Um, those kinds of things. What happens to the nutritional content when you dry it versus when you um, can it or when you freeze it, et cetera? And if you, if you depend on freezers and there's no electricity, then what? You know, do you have enough jars on hand that you could take all that food out of the freezer put it in a jar and can it in order to at least save some of it. And so there's lots of, lots of issues there. Um, The, another thing that I have really tried to encourage people to do is to get uh, a relationship going with mother nature, plant herbs, go out and walk in the fields and in the woods and get to know what is edible. What is a healing plant? They're everywhere. They're everywhere, but we don't know how to use them. I mean, I know some things, but, you know, even I have lots to learn. And that, you know, I look at people who have lived in the city all their life, and I think, oh, wow, that's really a dangerous place when you don't have an entire medical system operational. um, What do you do then? I think another thing that... um, I have encouraged people to do is to just take a period of time and fast so that you know what happens to your body and your mind when you do not have food for a long period of time. And there's a whole detox part of that, of that fast. And then there's this whole shift in consciousness that is, that's just amazing. But if you're not coming at that from this place of, of, you know, cooperation with your own body, and instead you're telling yourself, oh, I'm starving, oh, I'm worried, then you've got a problem. You're creating a problem because the body is going to listen to exactly what you tell it. And, and then another thing I've, I've encouraged people is to expand their consciousness. One of the things that was really powerful um, in the in the concentration camps were those people who uh, didn't have any food. They didn't have any more food than anybody else did. 
but uh, there were small groups of people who got together every weekend on Sunday, we'll say, and they pretended that they were having Sunday dinner with roast chicken and mashed potatoes and green beans and, you know, whatever, and, and desserts and cakes and little drink of porter or whatever, wine, and they would sit around this little table and they would imagine the taste of that food, the feel of it, the effect in their body, and the enjoyment of that whole scenario, that of that kind of life. And they survived, and they did not lose as much weight as the people who turned into skin and bones and died. And so I think there's something to be learned there, something to be gained in terms of can you, um, can you live without food? And the answer, absolutely, is yes. And one of my good friends in Kalamazoo uh, stopped eating three years ago. Just oh. one day decided, you know, I, I'm not going to eat. And he has, you know, I just I have been amazed at him. He didn't lose any weight at all. He just continues to live on this love and this energy that he generates from within himself. We have some big issues coming at us in terms of the planet. There's no guarantee that we'll be able to maintain our civilization the way that we have always expected that we would maintain it. And yes, we need to plan for the future and plan that the technology is going to be there and et cetera, et cetera. But what if it isn't? Then what? What's the plan? Yeah. How are you prepared? Mm. Uh, what do you need to know in order to be able to to counter or to hold um, all of those possibilities and not panic and move the self forward and move the self forward in a way that is gentle and beautiful and thoughtful and healthy and that says, hmm, maybe we should set the new civilization up a little differently. Mm. Oh, right. So that's yeah. basically the the things that I have been saying to people yeah. for a while. Wow. Wow. And on on a final note, you know, Penny, you, you these are big. These are big, big changes. It's almost like I'm a little bit embarrassed to say or ask, how, how, how's the money coming along? Like, do we have to think about the money crash? Do we need to think about crypto and, you know, changing our, our, our thoughts and ideas on money? But when you, when you <laughs> lay the picture out, <laughs> like what you've just said, money doesn't even be, come into the picture. But do you have any thoughts on the immediate changes of, of the civilization changes that we're coming up against? Yeah, um, as long as we have the civilization, and it is what it is, I tell people um, to walk with one foot on each side of the fence. And so, you, you know, there's some danger there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but one foot is in the world, the everyday world, et cetera, et cetera. And let's talk strictly finance. One foot is in the financial world that we have all grown up with, that we have all, you know, we know the ins and outs and how it works, et cetera. The other foot should be in the world of cryptos, learning how that works, getting ready to be able to utilize cryptos. Um, there are some amazing uh, deals that have been made, I think, just, um, I don't know when this prediction was made, but one of the predictions that came out of the Alta reports that Cliff High did years ago was that big countries were going to settle their debts using cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, just the other day, Argentina and Bolivia did settle their debt using Bitcoin. Wow, wow, wow. And And, go ahead. And on that same note, I mean, just moving on, I think you're right in having one foot in the medical industry and one foot healing yourself. You know, right. one foot learning about science through, you know, educational system, but one foot doing your own research and really learning yourself. It's like That's we are right. really in two paradigms, and 
the changes are going to happen in every single system that we operate in. Yes. Is that, is that right? Would you say that? That's correct. And we happen to be the people who came here to walk that way with one foot on each side of the fence. That's the transition. And people often, when I used to hear people talk about transition, I would say, you know, that word is used to signify death. So, you know, do they really understand that they're talking about making this big transition? Um, What is that? What does it look like? What does it sound like? And I think what we have to at least play with in our minds so that we're ready is that there's a death of a civilizational paradigm in progress. And that is, it'll it'll die slowly. Um, You know, one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that all the old ones who really don't want to learn any new ways, and they don't want to learn the new money, and they don't want to learn the, you know, any of the responsibilities, they're into, hey, I did my time. I just want to, you know, stay retired and, and be happy till I'm no longer here. Mm-hmm. So when those slowly go, then what's going to be left are all of those um, people who are saying, hey, you know, why don't we do this? Why don't we try that? Why don't we implement such and such? Or I'm using this, or we're trading with these, and so on and so forth. And these meaning cryptocurrencies or you know, we're, we are building houses this way now or we're healing ourselves this way now or we're educating ourselves this way now. They're not, they're not subscribing to... The old paradigm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, Penny Kelly, oh, we can talk forever. And um, just thank you so much for helping us uh, as we navigate these changes. We can learn more, consciousnessonfire.com. And Penny Kelly, I know you're pretty booked up for most of the year, but if anybody wanted to talk with you, perhaps they can reach out with and, and, and you know book an appointment or just listen to any of your interviews. And, oh, gosh, I've just learned so much from you. So thank you so much to you and the robes. For you're so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Penny.